Hi everyone, <laughs> uh, that's not how it's supposed to look, but that's okay. And I just want to take a moment to say thank you for coming and watching the stream. We are going to be doing some Lego building. Here we go. You can see me a little bit better with all my halo lights. God, that's awful. But I just thought you would like to know that we're going to continue to build the Lego Notre Dame set. And let's dive in. So here we are. I made some progress after the stream the other day. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so you can see we've added to it some of the exterior wall for the uh, nave, I believe it is. Choir door entry, which is pretty cool. Some other columns and some other little cool details here. So now we're on to bag six. And let's get this bag open everyone and dive in and see what's happening now. I hope all of you are having a good day. I know it's a little unusual for me to be streaming so early, but I feel like out and about for a little while. And I thought, hey, I could try streaming for <laughs> me for about an hour or so. Pieces like I've talked about before that I like to do it so that it matches with the construction book and that way I can kind of get a better look at what I have or what I can do. Um, some people do knowing and lining up each and every piece for the whole set and then going. <laughs> That's not what I'm doing. I mean, I guess it's a version of it if you want to do the script that out a little bit, but it's not really going to be So we're just going to do a little bit of thing to have going on. And I'm not all of you into Lego. That's okay. I think I mentioned previously on the other stream, but I think it's worth repeating actually, is that the building the Notre Dame set in the order that the actual Notre Dame cathedral was built. Because it was done in stages, it took an incredibly long time for them to build it. And some people never actually got to see the whole Notre Dame Cathedral being built because it took forever, right? Uh, I'm actually going to get you an actual time period uh, for how long it took because I don't want to give you an inaccurate number. So let's see. It was... Cathedral 
was begun building in 1163, and then it was finished in, oh goodness. Twelve seventy, it looks like. Yeah, twelve seventy. So that's quite a while. And I mean, these cathedrals back then—they took such a long time for being built. And they had innovative use of architecture, and just beautiful things in their own right. So people could spend their lives working on these things. Adding a little feature right here. Injection points. It's an aesthetic thing you don't have to do, but I like to. It's like cost a lot. And what am I constantly pop apart like that? You can actually take a little bit of extra work to make it happen. So, do whatever makes you happy, you know? If this is not your thing and you don't want to be going with it. Even in every node and so forth, it does. It's your hobby. Do it. How's it going to make you happy and enjoy it? So, now we're adding a little bit of covering to the walkways over here. Just wipe those on. Wipe them up. Put them down. This is already just adding a little bit more depth to it. Okay, so now we are going to be working on. So, off stream, I had done this section here, and it was actually made by using a bunch of these hinge pieces, like so. And if you connect them together in such a way, you can actually get a nice bend going on. And that's what Lego wants us to do. And this section here, we're building a base to do a bend. So that we can connect from here and go all the way up. about, I think it's just going to go up to here. That's it, maybe. Do a little assembly. And make this kind of like that. Four sets of these two pieces. And actually, last night I was building some of this. And I was watching it, and I was going to make it not going to be. So I was building some of this, and when I was building, I was able to watch it this way. It was really cool, and it was a lot of fun. Which is awesome, but also, I happened to realize I had messed up. And mistakes happen, but that's one of the great things about Lego, because you can make a mistake, and it's not the end of the world. Unlike, say, a mini, if you're painting the mini, you can't unpaint stuff. You can paint over it and eat or whatever. But if you're gluing the mini, 
you're done, right? Well, you can you put in dairy. Go ahead and disassemble them. Alright. And then I'll start if you want to get rid of those solvents. I'll use the solvents rather to get rid of that bond. And then I'll start with what you've got. So, kind of good to be mindful. Also, the play though, it's okay if you need to get distracted from the place. Put this mech to be put together, and also to take it apart. Every single Lego set is supposed to be able to come apart. And there was some controversy. Actually took apart, so people were upset. They're like, whoa, well, Lego, you're supposed to go apart. And it turns out, everyone was kind of a little right. Lego was saying, no, you can take it apart. And then people were saying, no, you can't take it apart. Uh, and it turns out that, well, that you had to kind of wiggle a piece back and forth. And then with enough. Wiggling, you could get, I believe, a brick separator. It's just enough to kind of scooch it over a little bit. And then that would allow you to take stuff out. Now, to me, that's a lot of work. But if it's what you gotta do, it's what you gotta do. So here's what we made with the sub assembly. And you're thinking, okay, that's cool, but what do we do with that? The reason we're doing this is pretty unique. As long as I didn't have to And so we're going to put it here, and part of it's going to go in front here, which is not really supported in the other part is going to go right here for that. So, let's make that happen. Let's expand so that we can actually get what we need on these four. Let's see if we did that right. So you can see, ta-da, this is what we just did. Yep. Right here, this is not supported, but that's okay because I'm sure it's going to connect on the other side in a moment. And lo and behold, we're basically repeating the process. So let's get our stuff together here. Now this is a little different because we are just going to be putting three of these pieces on here. Yeah, so the other one we have three, but um, we did that a little bit later. So we'll just get these on. Yeah. Of course, if you're watching and working, I appreciate your working. At some point when I have a moment, I'll figure out some commands so you can actually do a clerk command. Hope you will accept my apologies, but I don't have that set up just as of yet. This is only our third stream right now, and every stream I'm trying to do something to improve things, like just even if it's just one thing. And so for this time, I changed the orientation of the camera so that I'm all the way up here. Whereas before I was over here and I found that blocked too much of what you wanted to see on the cable space. Is it stupid? Probably. And I'm just grateful that anyone even wants to consider watching the stream or tuning in even for a moment. It means a lot. Usually what I do when I'm not taking my family or working or going on my stream. I've done audio podcasts of uh, tabletop games. Uh, Forty Mary Recon, we the name of this channel. I've done that 20 years this August. And I feel pretty comfortable with that by now. 
Uh, live streaming is another animal. So I would just be grateful for your patience and your understanding. I had a little reticent to do some live streams. I had done some before the pandemic started. I was live streaming and you know, I had some fun. I didn't get a ton of traction, but that's okay. That was some and so I had done that, and I thought, oh, that's neat. But then, I got away from it. I said, okay, I'm done. Focus on the podcast and a lot of other stuff. But then, over the past few months, <laughs> excuse me, I had um, give this a piece. I'm just gonna like to turn myself a piece here. It's gonna go right here. Do the neck as well. Um, so a few months ago, I don't even know what brought it to my mind, but I decided that I wanted to start watching. Line. She uses touch. She streams painting minis. She's an incredible minis painter. Really, just like a ordinary top notch kind of stuff. So, I had started watching her, and she would talk about doing fun things and all of that. And she tried to encourage me to go stream. Oh, actually, I know what it was, because like, I went to a tabletop game convention, Rise of Phoenix. And I could uh, see her there for a bit. And then she was at Huzzah, which is up in Portland, Maine. And I painted with her. I haven't painted minis in a long time, because I don't think they're very good. And it took me a long time. Story for another time. So I started watching her stream. And then one day, I was either watching her stream or someone else who goes by the name of Jelta, another great movie painter, and they weren't on. But on Twitch it said, if you like these streams, then you might like blah blah blah, like these streamers also like whatever. And I ended up on Good Enough Painting Stream. And then I started watching them for a while, and one of them watching others, and then I kind of got the bug to do some streaming. And it's an encouragement from some very nice people. Uh, well, you know, I can think about this and give it a try. And so that's what I've done. And my first kind of test stream is probably still on the channel somewhere. If I'm not on YouTube. Yeah. But that was me just playing a little bit of Ultimate General Gettysburg, which is a pretty good game that I really enjoy. And so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and start doing some Twitch stuff. But, and it's not something I get to talk about on the audio podcast because on that really I focus on getting to talk to you in general and people follow guests and new designers and authors and illustrators and whatever and we talk about conventions and talk about different games that come out and uh, tips and techniques and the creative process that's a big interest for me in the creative process. So we do all that, which is wonderful. I love it. The community seems to love it as well, so I'm a creative. But it's not really the right forum for discussing building Lego. So this is a nice way where I kind of go ahead and dodge my passion in another way. It's a lot of fun. So, I thought, hey, let's do this a little bit. And I usually just make them go on my own. And that was something I enjoyed doing. It was fun and activity. It was so different. And I was resistant to the idea at first of building the go as content. Because it's real. Generalized anxiety, and so I'm under doctor's orders actually. Well, it's a good thing because I like to do it, but I'm under doctor's orders to build Lego. And that's the 
Yeah, it's fun, but like, I'm fun. Like, a long time ago, I don't want to do that. So I actually took a break from uh, sharing pictures of what I was building. It was such a lot of pictures online. So I took a break from doing that. And I just kind of built some Lego just for me. How about this? What if I mix it up a little bit? What if I built Lego sometime? And what if I also Lego project is good for something. If you want to watch the video, say, what is Lego building? It's painting. I want to just leave it up in the air, which is probably what I'm going to do, honestly, because if it's too structured, it's going to be like a job. my friends. We should make the best of it. Okay. A little covering here. Oh, so this is, would be in the bottom, so if you're looking at Notre Dame, usually you're facing from where my finger is pointing towards the camera. So this is kind of right here. That's going to show the great. Number two technique. Uh, I think like this has a lot of trans black. This translucent black bricks. I think it doesn't use them a whole lot anymore. But I think it's nice that they have them. It's kind of a uh, callback. The old days. Um, that's what you had. It wasn't these perfectly clear pieces, generally. So you had to make do. These are, of course, windows. Super tiny pieces. One of the things I like about architecture sets is I've yet to encounter an architecture set that has decals or stickers or anything of that sort. So it just makes it a little bit easier to build. But a good trick and tip for everyone is use your brick separator. Get the decal up a little bit, get this underneath, and lift and then you can apply to where you need to. I also like rubber tipped tweezers. I don't have any at the moment, it goes to be really useful as well. Um, and a lot of Lego fans don't like sticking the time to the details. But Lego does it because it's cheaper to do that than printing imagery on a brick. So, for example, here's a CMF Lego Knight. This is printed. 
this is printed. The face printed, right? So when Lego first came out many, many moons ago, they didn't print on two of the pieces because the technology wasn't quite there for them to do so. And the cost was immense. Eventually, and here's an older one, this one has printed. This is like a 40 year old piece. Um, Lego minifig. So you can see right here, this printed on the front, the head has printed, and so forth. So, Lego was eventually, eventually able to do that. But if they print on every single piece that had some sort of imagery on it, it makes the cost skyrocket, right, for Lego. So, not only does it cost them more, but for them to still have the money to pay for all their expenses, pay for their employees and everything, they'd have to make the cost of the set go up, right? But if it goes too high, who's going to buy it? So they want to keep costs as low as they can, while also adding detail and so forth. So sometimes stickers are necessary. And as I said, not everyone loves that, and I get it. But I did use these tips. I'll use the brick separator, or I get some nice rubber tip. Tweezers, and I say rubber tip because if they're not rubber tip, you could actually scratch the stickers. Um, especially if they're like a metallic sticker, you can do it that way. But if you do those, it makes it a little bit easier. Dare I say, fun? I know that's kind of blasphemy. <coughs> Excuse me, in the label, but I think it kind of does. Getting them lined up just right. Anyway, it's very satisfying. And I suspect for other people, it might be as well. Oh, you might be thinking, whoa, these aren't perfectly lined up. And that's correct, because I haven't squished them yet. That's the nice thing about having a flat surface like this. You can just take them, press down, it helps to make it flush. Assembly line in this. Get these here. Make it interesting. Get them good and all. So now we've got these to come in. Okay. Square, so I'm just pushing down. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry, I'm asthmatic, so that's the thing. So the connection I actually made is just the middle section right there and not the indentations where things can line up. It's just another way that Lego makes it so you can get really cool, it's strange. Yeah, interesting connections to have many different ways for building it. Oh, that's awesome. It's nice that the world has all of this. We do really just want it. Yeah, so as you can see, so 
see right here. This is hanging over a little bit, so I was wrong. It doesn't go right in the middle. That's how it's going to be. Okay. I wondered what I was doing wrong, and I knew it had to do something. Windows for the next level. We use some already, but these are neat. So they use them with like minifigs with different things. You can use them for columns, the chops. We use them right here, right? But there's also these like corner piece ones, which are neat. So you can do all sorts of things. You don't need the corner ones yet. You just need these. People might think, oh wow, Lego is so square, right? And how can you get cool shapes and corners and angles. Oh, Lego is showing us right here. It's a pretty good job. These are going to be going, or we're done going from here. Transition so that we go from square to a more rounded transition, a rounded shape, and then go down to the columns themselves.
Very cool. Put it on the line for people to see. So we're going to not be able to see any of that detail. Now we can continue onward and do this one. right here are going to be extra. for the moment. Okay, so we can wait for you. As much as possible. People say that the seeing the injection points put that windows going down the cells. Well, I don't think it's that. I think it's that they're trying to keep the original. And some of the pigments that they use just make it easier to see the injection points. Is it annoying? Yes. But that's life sometimes, huh? Thinking, oh wow, there's so much happening. Why is there so much actually? Bag seven begins here. We can start building up. And then I was seeing some of this stuff and I was like, oh wow, this is still bag seven. We want eight, eight. But no, that becomes bag eight. But the interesting thing, look at these like droid arms in Star Wars. Nice part to usage. So we will actually. Now, we'll give you another look at this because we've been going for 
Oh, about 40 odd minutes or so. And I'd like to do a stream tonight. But here we go. What do we think so far? Wire door again. So we're starting to build next level, second story. that let's see. oh you get a chance to take a peek at this let's see who we can raid out to is anyone on oh dr krabby we can raid dr krabby so we're gonna go ahead and raid out of here i want to thank all of you for taking the time to be here with me today i hope you've enjoyed it and We'll try to do another stream tonight that maybe goes a little bit longer. So, just thank you so much. And remember, no matter how busy you are, no matter what's going on, sorry, that's my closing, my audio broadcast. Uh, just hope you're having a good day. Bye. Raid, 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 raid. raid.